Howdy everyone, this is a quick introduction to my how to build and magnetise a Forge World Venerable Dreadnought video. Um, in a minute the video will start and you'll be magically transported back in time to when I began assembling the Dread about a day and a little bit ago. But before then I just thought one thing I've not done in any of the little videos that I've filmed for this is talk about the tools you'll need for the job. So I'm going to talk about that very quickly. Here you can just see the Dread as I've got it to the stage where the next step is undercoating it, priming it and painting it. So we've got a couple of components that are going to be too fiddly to attach. Um, and we've got the base separate. Right, to illustrate what I'm going to be talking about, I'll remove the magnetised bits of the Dread so you can see what we'll be going for in our video today. Obviously you're going to need magnets. I brought from Magnet Expert in the UK uh, some 2mm diameter by 1mm magnets and I was a bit worried when I looked at them, you can see them through there, that they weren't going to be strong enough but they are absolutely fine for this job. The tool, the drill I've used to make these holes is from Army Painter, it's their standard miniature drill and this is the largest of the uh, drill bits that comes in the set which happens to also be 2mm diameter. So you'll need those. As normal, your trusty craft knife, some super glue, and I find the magnets. You've got to be a bit careful with the glue, because if you put too much on, and I made this mistake, fortunately not whilst I was filming, but the magnets want to stick to each other anyway, being magnets. If you add a bit of glue in the equation because you sloppily put some into one of the uh, holes you drilled out, you're never going to get them apart. I found uh, that toothpicks are really good for um, applying small amounts of super glue to the magnets. And also, when you're pushing magnets around, pulling them around, maybe you put them in green stuff, using the wooden end of a paintbrush is really handy. For obvious reasons, don't you try to use metal to push and pull your magnets around, because otherwise the magnets will just stick to it, and they are powerful magnets. So you need some non-magnetic things. I found, like I say, this end of a paintbrush really really handy. Apart from that all you need is a bit of time, teeny bit of green stuff which I'm sure most people will have anyway and the best of luck to you so I hope you enjoy the video it's the first proper how-to I've done um, done it over a couple of days just got to edit the videos together now have a really good time any questions PM me well enjoy the video. Okay folks dreadnought time now first up what I'm gonna do open the packs check I've got everything then put everything in some warm soapy water Give it a bit of a scrub to get the uh, mould release agent off. So we'll see you when I've done all that. Okay, quick hobby tips. Uh, number one, as you're checking off you've got all the bits. Tick them off on your sheet so you can remind yourself what things you've already checked you've got. Number two, Tupperware is your friend. Number three, if you're going to rinse things in a sink, make sure firstly that the person you're living with or people you're living with don't mind resin in the sink. And secondly, you've got your plug-in. You don't want to be sending your precious forge your bits down the drain. Okay, any pieces of model which are like this that are attached to a very large piece of resin, I'm going to use my uh, modelling saw to detach that. Smaller bits like these feet, I'm going to use my craft knife for to slowly cut through those and detach them. And also do my sawing, I'm going to be wearing this face mask, because although before George use a non-toxic resin, it's still going to be airborne. I don't want any nasty coughs or anything, just to be uh, just to be safe, I'm going to be wearing that, okay? So I'm going to saw through these, and then see you when we start cleaning up the bits of model. See you in a second. Okay, so all the blocks of resin are removed now, um, with the exception of these very small components, which I'm keeping attached. These, for instance, are some of the uh, close combat armor claws. Keeping those attached to the blocks because that'll make them uh, harder, harder to lose. Next step is to clean up the unsightly areas, either mould lines, flash, or areas where, like here, you can see where the join was to the resin. Areas like this on the plasma rifle, got a bit of a mould line there. We're going to use my uh, craft knife to slowly scrape away at. Very, very flat areas like this, I'm going to use my file for very important, because resin can be quite soft, do not try to file away 
flash near any detail, otherwise you might well ruin the detail. Juicy sort of nose like this is going to be on the back of the Mini, no one's really going to see it. It's just a flat surface. Okay, so I'll see you when that's all done and I'm starting to dry fit the model. Once you've cleaned up the Mini, you usually find you get sort of lots of debris, lots of little bits of resin, so a dustpan brush normally helps. So just uh, tidy up, get it in the bin. It's really important to dry fit your models. It lets you know what options you have, what options you don't have, how things are going to work together. This is a good example. Both the main body, the dread, and the feet have what appear to be ball joints. What I discovered pretty early on is with the feet there's actually genuinely only one position they can really go. Whilst whilst connecting the legs to the body, there's actually quite a bit of movement you can get in there. Quite a lot of rotation movement. So, I knew that I wanted to pin the legs, because I always like to pin models into the base to make it more secure. However, sort of the issue I had was, they can only go onto one position on the legs, but if I glued the feet onto the legs, then tried drilling the pins in, um, the sort of motion of drilling would probably loosen the glue or take the legs off. So what I decided to do in the end was this is the base I'll be using to sort of keep the main part of my dreadnought on before I um, put it onto the base. I put the feet on, then I positioned the dread legs so the fit, feet fit perfectly and then with my Micron Arts pen, if you look there you can see I drew around the location of the feet. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to drill and pin these feet next. I'm going to put a hole in the base where I can put these perfectly and they'll just slot in there and then I can stick the legs in like that and it should all line up perfectly and there won't be any issues with things not lining up. And well, fingers crossed, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so what I did was I drilled straight through the feet in the centre of this base in the middle, drilled straight through, then before I put the pin in, I put them on top of their places and drilled straight through the hole again to put a hole there. Then I just got some of uh, some good old paper clip, there we go, stuck it in to make the pin and if we look here we can see they slide in nicely into place. Excellent. Now it looks a bit more difficult than it actually is because I'm doing this with my left hand because I'm holding my right hand with the camera. There we go. Right. Whilst we were doing that, I started thinking about magnetising the torso to the legs. Or I suppose technically in the fluff it's the sarcophagus, isn't it? What I did was I put a little bit of a orange paint in the middle of the ball joint here. Whilst it was still wet, pushed it up into the sarcophagus, which left an orange mark at the same point inside the inner joint there. Then with my drill pin got it to the same uh, diameter as my magnets. Drilled in, actually found that with the same diameter drill bit the magnets didn't quite fit in. So what I did was I got my craft knife and just used it to sort of scrape out a teeny bit more space. Put the magnets in there and then my last step drilled out here, be pushing these together when I uh, glue them. Now the reason you can see the long length of all the magnets there is because the worst thing in the world would be uh, to have two magnets stick them in the wrong way around so actually because of their polarity they repelled each other. So if you do it like this, so all these magnets are stuck to the magnet that's stuck in here, stick the other magnet to the end here, you guarantee that the magnets are going to be attracted to each other, they're going to want to stick. Okay, so we're going to get this bit done. Next video, hopefully, we'll have uh, have them connected. Okay. Right, so we've got to the point now. We've got our magnetised dread body to the torso. Holds quite nicely. Um, make it a bit easier to carry and move around on it. And uh, nice to be able to pose. So that's sorted now. Next step, we're going to do the same for the two weapons arms. Also, if you look here, 
a little bit of the end of the pipes didn't quite make it through the moulding process and then through the uh, <laughs> cleanup process as well. So I've just moulded a quick bit of green stuff to get that sorted and then we'll, in a minute when it's cured a bit more we'll get that looking a bit neater. So next up we're going to be magnetising the arms. Okay, so the next step was to magnetise the sarcophagus. I marked the centre of the joints I was going to be magnetising with a bit of orange paint, then dry fit the arm joints in, and that meant that both sides of the joint had a mark where I needed to drill. Drilled a hole in the sarcophagus, went to put the magnets in and realised actually the hole wasn't quite snug enough, there was a bit of wiggle room, so I just popped in a bit of green stuff before, then pushed the magnets in over the top. And that was a very easy step with this. With this arm, and you can see with the close combat arm, I've actually then since stuck the other parts of the arm together, which is a very simple process. All you need to know is just drilled the hole where I'd marked it with the paint, um, stuck in the magnet. That was nice and easy. The most challenging part of this stage was with the plasma gun, the size of the joint on the plasma gun was much wider and longer than on the sarcophagus. And let's have a quick look at that to show that. You can see there it was very deep, very wide. Normally, if you were just gluing, that wouldn't be an issue at all. But because we're magnetising, we needed to make it a bit more snug, a bit tighter. So what I did was, and actually if you saw my video, um, the July Challenge number 4 video, you'll have seen this happening. I pushed some green stuff in here. I attached... A second magnet to this, so there was a un well unstuck, unglued second magnet on top of this one. Then I pushed the arm on in position and let it cure. And what that's done is that's created a very, very, very tight fit with the magnet firmly in there. So I'll see if I can balance this up and assemble the dread now, just to show you the stages. You might also notice that the dread Scott is uh, exhausts on. That was a very simple job of gluing that on. Now. As ever, it's a bit trickier than normal to do this because I'm using my left hand because my right hand's filming. Apologies for blocking the camera, but hopefully you should see how easily everything's fitting together. Now this hand is a lot more snug, so let's get this on. There you go. And that's what we've got to so far. My last stage now is I've got to fit in all the little detail bits um, and finish the base. So I'm going to show you that when that's done in a second. Okay, so this is the final stage for the model before you start thinking about sealing it with a matte varnish and priming it with paint to begin painting it. On the sarcophagus, I've added the tubing down here, the sensor and the combi bolter. I've also added the uh, grenade launcher at the top there and that was a simple enough job of just sticking them on. The other components that are left, that's the two sort of banners that go down the side of the dread. The banner that covers the, draw, the dread's <coughs> special places and the halo the dread would wear, I've left off. You can see there I've just blue tacked them ready for spraying to a toothpick. And the only reason for that is it's going to get in the way when I'm painting them. It's going to be a bit fiddly because of the way they hang. There's going to be a chance of them snapping them off, snapping off as I move the mini around to get it sprayed and things. They're the sort of thing that just need to be glued on. I've dry fit them all. They fit very, very simply, very, very nicely. But when they're painted, I'll just put a bit of glue on and put them on there when it's all finished. Ditto the head. The head is super detailed and one of the bits I'm most excited about painting on the dread. I'm going to hopefully do some nice light sort of sourcing on the eyes. But I was looking at it. There's no way I'm going to be able to paint that even halfway to the standard I'd like to if it's ready in the sarcophagus because that obscures quite a bit of it. Finally, the base. I got some cork placemats and coasters, tore them up a bit, super glued them on, then PVA glued the sand. So, these are the next steps. We're going to spray all the resin with a matte or satin varnish. I'm going to use just Games Workshops. And what that means is, even if there is a little bit of the old mould release still left in there, it will be sealed away. No worries, it's not going to hurt when you start painting it. Then I'm going to undercoat everything. I'm going to make sure that the arms, the sarcophagus, everything is detached. I'm going to spray them sort of 360 degrees around the model, so every part of it's got primer on. Then I'm going to begin painting it. Same with these. The base 
is just going to be sealed with PVA glue to stop the sand, sand falling off and then I'm going to give that the undercoat of paint and I'll be using black undercoat. This is going to be the end of this video. I will do a separate video to show um, the process I've gone through to paint it, which might be in a little bit because I've got a couple more painting projects to go. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful for you. If you've got any questions, please make sure that you ask either in the comments or PM me or anything like that. Good luck using magnets, guys, if you're deciding to. I hope this has inspired you too. See you soon.